to turn on a device, say, turn the bedroom lights oh my God. on, or hey, turn on the heater. Hey, Google. To play something. Hey, Google, say, shut the f*** music. up. Oh, my God. Shut the f*** up. She's so loud. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just so you guys know, you're being recorded. Whoa, look at that. Look how fast it drops off. This one being marked now, that's like the 50-60. So this is 60 now. Do you think based on, on what we're seeing, I need to set a first pulse killer or something? Like, why is it so bright? Maybe it's my timing is off or something. It seems very bright at that right edge as it pulses that final pulse. It could just be the settings that you have, you know? My settings don't seem set very well. My start is at negative 100, the laser off's at 100, the polygon's at 100, and the end is at 300. Well, if your squares and look uh, even, uh, you know, if they actually look okay, then it's not a huge deal. I mean, it doesn't mark, it doesn't mark, it's just... A, yeah, with glass, it's quite easy. If it's breaking in, it's quite easy to hide any stuff like that. Okay. See, look, it just left the line. Yeah. You can see a couple spots one. where it did, where it the just burned one. the line in. Yeah, yeah, and the, this is a problem on my CO2 Galvo as well, where yeah. the edges are way hotter. God. Than, it, I know. Very, very. You have a very small range, <laughs> but. Yeah, I think you, yeah, yeah, you should do this for all the other materials too at some yeah. point. I think you, most of the lines actually marked underneath too. Like when you had a really bright light, I could see like outlines on the table. But yeah, you should figure out where those squares are. Maybe we could figure something out with those numbers. Yeah, I think the first white tiles we can see, I believe, are the second column. So at least 20 nanoseconds. And then 30 is the next one over 40 is the third column and then it looks like it drops off on 40 20 and then 50 60 70 80 90 100 so literally all the other ones when you're at 10 kilohertz almost any pulse width will mark the glass that's your bottom row right the x-axis is nanoseconds the y-axis yeah. is kilohertz almost any pulse width will mark the glass as long as you are under 20 kilohertz yeah that's it's interesting i mean you could um take the, that row and you could make another one to see like i'd be curious if you can see if any of those are deeper or lighter yeah, I'll, go, I'll go get it i'll go get it yeah all oh, dude there's it's so weird about that bright edge is definitely packing more power along that bright edge because it's marked that's the insane. glass in almost every single square on that bright edge but nothing else and just depth wise, they're all pretty surface. I'd say 10 nanoseconds, 20, 30 at what, 10, 20, 30, 40. So it's like 30 at 40 is really the, the most depth. Yeah, so 30 uh, pulse at 40 kilohertz. So it's it's right around where it should be. But yeah. some of these other ones are cleaner, like the 80, 90, 100 nanosecond at 10 is also very nice they're like very clean hitting on the 30 30 is much more like aggressive right yeah whereas the 10 kilohertz at the higher pulse width range is uh more kind of like a, a sandblasting yeah almost. yeah yeah that's interesting because those uh, everything on the 10 and it, how far is it you said it's you said basically from 20 to 90 so the, the 10 did i'm going by the the lines yeah <laughs> those edges so it's 10 20 30 so 40 nanoseconds to 100 nanoseconds at the 10 kilohertz line are all effective which one is the best on that row in your opinion they're they're literally dude they're they're all like almost identical <laughs> i i'd say from 50 to 100 i can't there's no visible discernible difference between them yeah it's a really interesting result you have your range of um, settings to use on that piece of glass. I wonder if you take one of those and throw it on the salt shaker and, and see if you get the same. Yeah, like the 10 hundred. Yeah, like, like 1080. Cause I, 10... Because I thought we tried 10. 100, 10, right? Or maybe it was yeah. 110. I might have flipped them. Yeah, I'll try it. I'll throw it on because I got it right here.
The pointer did not return to the origin. Yeah, it stayed up, like when it finished. I think it's just that top right corner. So what I'm gonna do is just try a quick frame and see if that resets it. There we go. All right, so we are going to create a box. We're going to hatch it the same exact way our test boxes were hatched, which was unidirectional, no crosshatch, no all calc at point oh two. Yeah, I think that's and zero two five. That's whatever. a fair. That's a fair difference. That's twice as tight as we were testing earlier. So that may be the difference as well. Getting more overlap. Yeah, just more time to heat, right? Because it's hitting that those same locations over and over again. So for uni, if you were doing bi-directional, you could probably play around with it, right? Right. Um, and then we don't have any idea what speed that test was run at. If you open it back up, it should have default values, right? Just for science, I'm just going to run this. So we know between 200 and 300 gets us ablation. So I'm just going to run it at three. It's doing that weird flicker thing. That makes no sense. So, okay, so I'll stick the giant sheet of glass back in there, right? And we'll try it again because that would rule out the glass difference. Yeah, correct. Okay, so we'll do that next. All right, let's try that again. The strobing is definitely an effect of the camera because I can't see that at all, even with the naked eye. Okay. It's just without my goggles on. Yeah. And, but that beam, that line beam, is still definitely prominent, which is odd. So the only thing I can think is that we need to go slower. So I'll set it down to 100 because we should be able to reproduce that mark, right? Yeah, unless that window did something crazy, stupid, different. That's not doing it either. 50. Nothing. What's going on? Did I refocus? Uh, No, I didn't see your stick out. I'm going to go back to 300. Frequency 10, pulse width, 100 nanoseconds. It's ablating at the edge where the pillar is, but nowhere else. 100. Nothing. Unless I'm misreading the grid. I could be misreading the grid. Maybe it didn't blow up until 20. Oh, like you might be a row off. But now that's saying my max pulse width at 20 can only be 50. Like if I'm a row off. Nope, that's not ablating either. So I guess the next logical thing, because what can we change here? Loop count, speed, frequency, pulse width, power. And power is irrelevant. If we suspect that a frequency of 10 kilohertz should be able to mark this, Y would be one. And then X, we could test all values for pulse width. Yeah, I was gonna say make another grid with your suspected values and just do like a nine, you know, like a three by three or something. Okay, so this should be good. I'm gonna light that. And we're gonna run this again. Okay, this is the first box. So this should be 10 kilohertz at 10 nanoseconds. Okay, so we could actually calculate it. You could you could do an elapsed time to see how long this box takes. Take your width and try to calculate your speed that way. You know what I'm saying? So you could say, hey, that one square took 15 seconds. My scan is 0 0.002 and the box is 10 millimeters wide. You're just barely dividing. All the speeds should be exactly the same for these. It just All right, makes I'll, sense for them not I'll to time be. one. I mean, all you have to do is measure the box and we can time it. It seems pretty fast. Has it gone to the next one yet? No, not yet. I'm trying to watch the switch over. Now. All right, so 32 seconds. Um, if I'm if I'm relatively close. I'm timing this one, so I'll let you know. I'll, we yeah. can compare. See, the thing is, some of these combinations aren't allowed by the main system, because I can't run a 10 kilohertz, 100 nanosecond mark. So what is it doing? That would explain why all of those look so similar after 50. If they're doing the exact same thing. And it may be running 50 for not, every one, right? Yep. It does whatever the max is that it's allowed to do and nothing more. All right. I got a minute and five for two squares. So 32.5. Yep. I got 32.8. Okay. So we're pretty close. So it's the same okay. speed. And the boxes are, uh, it looks like it starts at two, spacing two. So it should be two. So two, two, eight would be six so six millimeters square 
And what was our line spacing? 0.002? 102. And it's in millimeters per second, right? Yes. So it's 300 lines in 32 seconds. So nine? A scan of nine? That doesn't sound right. It doesn't look right either. I'm looking over here because that's where um, the black square is yeah. actually touching the ruler. Oh, so that looks about eight, right? So you're like four to four or something like that. I think right. it's eight. Okay. So that's 400 by 32. It's still like 12 millimeters a second, 13 millimeters a second. It seems too slow, but 30 seconds per square does seem like a lot. What's the lowest speed you can do? You can't go lower than like what, 20? I can go to nine. Yeah, well, let's, let's see if we can recreate it. Because maybe it's just going so slow. That's what nine looks like. It's definitely not going at nine. Nine is significantly slower than the test is being run. All right, do um, 15. Still significantly slower. I mean, it's not even close. Do you know that square is the exact same size? Make it the exact same right, size. Right, right, and right, then, right. And then we'll just run it up to 30 seconds. Yeah, bad testing. Let's try 100. That actually looks about right, so we'll see. We'll get a mark time off this. That looks much closer. Do you get an elapsed time on um, Easy Cat up there or no? Oh, yeah, I do. I do. I do. We're at 15 seconds. Okay. 100 completes an 8 millimeter square in 34.2 seconds. Okay, so if the squares are the exact same size, then there's our speed. I mean, that would be a logical speed for the parameter test default. Yeah. Yeah, It something slow and you ran unilateral too. Okay, so and I've... that worked? That ab that ab abelated? No, it, it did not. So there's something different about how the assistant, quote unquote, works. Because it's it's doing different parameters than what we're actually getting. Right. We cannot drag and drop them. I was hoping that the assistant would help us as opposed to just waste our time and move the wrong direction. Because you've got some really nice squares. If you could just literally take those numbers and plug them in elsewhere, it'd be fine. Can we confirm that the beam is moving from left to right? Yeah, left to right. Okay, good. So knowing that first pulse killer isn't the pillar problem. No, because it's the right side that's doing it. Right, so we can rule that out. Maybe my uh, laser off value is not set correctly. Q pulse with one is max power, but that's not going to be true for me. Also, he never goes beyond pulse width 18. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I would have done such a small spread, you know, 1, 5, 10, 15, but it, it's a starting place, right? Without, oh, we'll yeah, see if any of these are blatant because none of them are close to that 30, right? I guess, yeah. so we'll have that. Wow, that's a tiny little test. It's doing things. Well, it's it not blading. I don't hear anything yet. Oh, I can see like sparks coming off. It looked like one of them did. Yeah, crazy, right? Was that it? Is it done? It's so small, dude. But I can read a couple of them. So I guess we'll take the ones we can read and blow them up. That's the hard thing about testing like this is that you don't get a full spread. They yeah, it's a really narrow range. Pulse width 10 kilohertz 70 marked a little. Pulse width 9 kilohertz 110 marked a little. Really, the only two legitimate ones are pulse width 1830 and pulse width 1840. So the bottom row and nothing else. Yeah, honestly, from, from what I'm seeing, I don't know if there's a point um, in going any more, like stay between 30 and 40 kilohertz and then just play with the pulse width until you get something that you like. I think you've anecdotally narrowed it down and then we've done this twice. All right, I'm gonna try these two. Do you see this right now on my screen? The two dots? I saw that earlier and I was wondering- Oh, is that, that is that two red dots for focal height? It's odd. Um, I have the results back. They are ugly, but it's ablated. Splotchy as hell. So, I don't know, technically worked, I, I, I still feel like we gotta, you know, double the pulse width on those to get back to where you were, right? Right. So I'm gonna run the same thing again, and I'm gonna use the 30, 33, just to compare, just so that we have like a, a base for comparing. What were the speeds you were using for those last two, Alex? J-Mac was doing his at 200. 200 to 400 is kind of where it's at. So I'm seeing a couple of these um, UVs with EasyCAD 2. I guess it doesn't make a difference which one you use. Mine's EasyCAD 2. Easy 2. Yeah, I guess it's just whatever film board they put in. If you want 3D, then yeah. Easy 3. I'm just, I'm really trying to wrap my head around why these talk differently and why Lightburn would have trouble with them. The interface should be no different. They're serial, right? Yep. 
Are you talking about EZ3 for EZ2? No, I'm talking about Lightburn not being able to output power consistently. The third one unlabeled is 3033 again, just I for mean, comparison. Yeah, and that's at 200? That's at 200. Yeah, I mean, that that's you know that's good, but, I can, do. We, yeah, but can we be better? I, I know it's good, but can we equate? I, that's what I yep. want. I don't. I don't care about it being better or worse. I, I. I want to find the middle ground between my and Kyle's sources. That's the real. That's the original goal of all of this. 